Right, so in order to get the perpendicular bisector, I would take my compass and have to put it on this um, endpoint right here, G. I would then, do you see if I kind of even stretch this out? Will I ever be able to get to F right now? So I'm going to have to turn it. And then I think a little bit less. Okay, does everybody understand how I did that so far? Now, what do I need to make sure my opening is on my compass? We talked about this yesterday. What do I, and so what did I tell you to put it about to? Yeah, about three-fourths. That way you're guaranteed to be more than halfway. And what we're going to do is make our arc mark. Pretty cool, right? Now, notice the degree. Now what I'm going to do is Move this so this is over here. You follow me? Okay. I'm going to spin this thing around. So now it's on this side, and I'm going to make my arc mark here. And what am I looking for? And draw my line between them. It looks like it's a little bit off. Well, that's why. And right there is my perpendicular bisect. It, this is where this, this construction, I'm not using my eyes. That's where my construction said it goes. Does that make sense on how I did my construction? Now that's the perpendicular bisector. Now I'm supposed to use this thing right here to construct my angle bisector. So I'm going to take this right here. I'm going to put it on the ray, one of the rays of E. Oh, you know what I'm going to do? This last time I made it easier to see. Well, an angle is consisting of two rays, right? So this is the end point, and this is the extension of where it's going out. Now, does this thing continue going out? Yes, it does. There, there's just no, I, I, but that's there. I don't have to draw it. I, they only drew the segment. Do you follow me? So kind of everything is there imaginatively, if that makes sense. So we're just understanding that this is the endpoint, and then this is the ray that goes out. But they only drew it as a segment. Yes. No, I'm gonna because they want the intersection of them. So you see how I did this right here? I'm about to. I, I changed it because I want to change the color so you guys don't get the arc marks mixed up. But you see how now it's gonna be red. So I'm going to put this over here. And I'm going to move this so that it's on. Uh, angle it a little bit. So that's good. And I'm going to, oops. I'm going to draw my arc mark. And what did I tell you to do with that now? Keeping that same thing. I'm going to move this to here. And where did I say I want to make my, my arc? So I want to make my arc way over here. Why? Where does where this arc need to be? What am I trying to find? What am I trying to draw? The angle what? Where's the angle bisector going to happen? In the middle of what? Hello? Where is the angle bisector going to happen as far as to E? In the middle of it, right? So I want to make my arc marks out here. Because my that's not where the angle bisector is going to go. So I'm going to go towards the middle of E where I think it's going to be. I'm going to eyeball it. And I'm going to make my arc mark like that. And I'm going to move this thing over to this one. And I'm going to do another arc mark. And where those two arc marks intersect, that is where I'm going to draw my 
line and it's going to start at E and go through that intersection. And now why do I continue that on? What was the problem asking? Where the intersection of the perpendicular line to GF and the angle bisector. So what would the answer to this question actually be? The answer to this question would be this point right here. That's the point that they, you were trying to find. That's where they both intersect. I've already given this pen. Does that make sense? Questions? That should. That does the perpendicular. That does the angle. What's the other two that you should know how to construct? Copy A, line segment, and copy A, angle. Those are the four constructions that we've gone over. Mm -hmm. All right. Got to go because I'm a little bit behind. Here we go. So the first thing we're going to talk about is a midpoint. How do you find the middle of two numbers? No, how do you find the middle of two numbers? Like, what's the, how do you find the middle of eight and ten? You add them together and then divide by two, right? What's eight plus ten? Divide by two. Is it nine in the middle of eight and ten? If you want to find the middle of two numbers, you add them and divide by two. Well, we're going to do that same thing, except we're on A. Don't write this. Just watch for a second. I will tell you when to write your notes. Just watch this for understanding. If I'm on an, a coordinate plane, rotating, what is the problem? What, what This right here consists of two numbers, doesn't it? A X and A. And this also consists of A. Oops. This is B. It consists of an X and a Y, correct? What is the X? It's, uh, yes, it's the horizontal. So if I wanted to get the midway between A and B, couldn't I say, hey, this is how far you went to the left, and this is how far you went to the right. And if I found the middle, which I'm just going to sketch that for you, if I found the middle, which I say is somewhere around here, that would be the middle of my horizontal. You follow me? Or I would take the x and add it to the other x and divide by, and that would give me my x for what we're going to call our midpoint. But then I have to take the vertical, which is the y, and say, hey, I need to find the midpoint of u, which is somewhere around maybe here, maybe a little lower, maybe here. I'm just eyeballing it. And then what I would really do is take the y, add it to the other y, and divide by 2. And that would give me my y coordinate, which would be about right here. And that would be called our midpoint. Do you understand the process of where they came up? So this is the formula. It is called the midpoint formula. You should star this. I told you I would tell you when things are important. This is important. And it's called the midpoint formula. And all you're going to do is take the x's and add them together, divide by 2, and take the y's, add them together, and divide by 2. You should, we, you, we learned some things and we go back over it, so you should have seen this. You don't need any of that stuff. Let's go sit down. Now, Here's what I don't what I want you to focus on. I normally write this as x plus x over 2. And I normally write it as y plus y over 2. What do I leave out when I write it versus what the book? This is the book definition. This is what I remember. What do I leave off? Yeah, those are called subscripts. They actually have no mathematical value. Do you know what the only purpose is? Yeah. Just for organization, but here's the thing. Whatever X you cut, put first and you put in that location, 
as long as you put the Y that goes with it first in that location, it doesn't matter which X or Y you put first. They just, these two have to be a what? They have to be in an ordered pair together. These two right here have to be what? That's why it's X1 and Y1 first. That's why it's X2 and Y2. That's all they're trying to get you to do. It doesn't matter which one you put first. So if I gave you two ordered pairs, could you put technically the second X in the first? Could you put the second X here? Yes, you could. As long as you put what? The second Y right there. You follow. Okay? That doesn't help us out too much in the midpoint, but it will in another one. In other formulas, that will help us out to understand that concept. All right, so here's what it's going to look like. They're going to give you this. They're going to ask you to find the midpoint between these two. Am I allowed to just guess? Hey, what's the first problem we run into? Yep. Oh, that's it's close enough. It's meant to be. There's no, what are they called though? So this is one. We're counting by ones. This is two. So we're all counting. Every tick marks one. That's good. That's a good thing to ask. What's the other part? There is. I just didn't. I didn't label it for you. So what is the coordinate of A? Negative 3, 2. That's how they're going to give it to you in your homework. You're going to actually have to count over and know how to make this order pair possibly. Okay, what is the coordinate for B? And now how do we find our midpoint? We take the X and minus the X. Um, do I want you to do negative, uh, I'm sorry, we add them together. Do I want you to do negative three plus four or four plus negative three? Does it matter? Nope, it doesn't. So we can do uh, four plus a negative three divided by what? That's our X coordinate for the, the midpoint. And then we're going to do since I did four first, what has to come for first here? The negative two has to come first, plus two, and then divide by two. Four plus a negative three is one. One over two is a half. Leave it as a fraction, please. You need to stop being scared of fractions. They're numbers too, and they have feelings. And in fact, fractions are better than decimals. I promise you, I can prove it to you. I won't have time today, but during the year sometime, I will show you I can smash fractions faster than you can even come close to doing decimals. It's not even a fair fight. So we will learn how to deal with them, and you have to learn how to deal with them if you're going to be successful in algebra 2 anyway. So we're going to start practicing now. Negative 2 plus 2 is 0. What is 0 over 2? So there is my midpoint. Uh, if they just ask you for the coordinates, that would be your answer. Yep. Next, what if I didn't want to go mid? What if I didn't go halfway? What if I wanted to go three-fifths of the way? And I said, hey, I'm at A. Here's B. I don't want to go the full way. I only want to go three-fifths of the way. How the heck would you figure out what coordinate that is? So here is the way we would do that. So is going to say, what are the coordinates of the point three-fifths of the way, and this is important, from 
A to B. That is important that we are going from A and going to B. That means if I'm here and I'm going to B, that would mean three-fifths of the way would be around here at this point. If I was starting at B and going three-fifths, that would end up being here. Are these two points the same exact spot? So does it matter where you're going from? Yes, in this case it does. So here we go. I'm just going to give you the order pairs. This one is for A. It's 3, negative 4. And for B, it is 13, 11. Well, don't I want to go three-fifths of the way horizontally? And then three-fifths of the way vertically? And if I did both of those together, it would be three-fifths of the way from A to B, and I'd have the coordinates. Do you follow me? Yes or no? So how, am I, how far am I going from A to B if I'm talking just horizontally? Just horizontally, I don't have to worry about going up or down. How far do I have to go to get from A to B to be on the same, like, X coordinate? Ten. Does everybody understand that? How did we get that? You take 13, and you minus 3, and you always do the absolute value for distance because it's never negative. And then we're going to times it by 3 fifths. So instead of going the full 10, we're only going to go 3 fifths of that way. Do you follow? So if we were going the full way from A to B, we would go 10 units this way. But we don't want to go 10. We only want to go 3 fifths of that. So to find that, we take 3 fifths and times it by 10. And what we realize is when we do our simplifying from algebra 1, we realize that all we have to do is go 6 units. So if we were going 10, we'd be going the full distance. But if we only go 6, that's 3 fifths of the way horizontally. Does that make sense? But now we also have to move 3 fifths of the way what? Vertically. And so we got to go, well, how far is it for me to go vertically from negative 4 to 11? Well, I go 11 minus a negative 4. This turns into a plus sign. And I'm going to multiply it by 3 fifths. So I get 3 fifths times 15. 3 fifths times 15. Cross simplify. So if I only wanted to go three fifths of the way, I would only move nine spaces up. If I was going from A to B, I have to go, if I was going the full distance, it would be 10 units this way and then 15 units up, right? But if I only want to go three fifths of that way, then I only go six units to the right and nine units up, and now. I'm going to be three-fifths of the way to B. But how do I find that coordinate? What am I going to do with the 9 and the 6? I'm going to take the 6 and add it to the X, and take the 9 and add it to the Y, and that will tell me my coordinate is 9, 5. That coordinate is three-fifths of the way from A to B. If you miss something, remember, this will be up on YouTube today. Try to do, when I give you a question like this, try to do the same kind of thing. If you notice, I took the x and I minus the x and I times it by whatever value they asked for. So if this is a four-fifths, instead of being a three-fifths here, what would I have put there? A four-fifths. Yes? Ah, gotcha. All right, last thing we need to talk about. It's called the distance formula. This is another thing you need to star. This is definitely something we use. Distance formula is the change in x. So we go x 
minus x squared plus y minus y squared. What did you notice I left off again? Because again, it doesn't matter, does it? What's the only thing that matters? This x and this y are a what? They're an ordered pair. They go together. This x and this y have to be a... doesn't matter which one you put first. You get the choice. So if I asked you to find the distance between these two ordered pairs, I say, what's the distance between negative 3, 4, and 1, 7? What is the distance between that? Yep, that's, you would use that formula. So you're going to go, hey, I'm going to do the square root. So hold on, Brody. Here's how I would think first. I'm going to do x minus x, right? Do I want to do negative 3 minus 1? I personally don't. I would rather do 1 minus a negative 3. And I can do that because I have the power to do that. I said you can do whichever x you want first. Why would I do that? Because a negative and negative become a... But what did I say has to happen back here? No matter what, since I put the 1 first, it, you don't have a choice back here anymore. Since the 1 went first, the 7 has to go first now back there. So you get a, a choice for the first one, but then the second one has to follow the pattern you already created. So I must do 7 minus 4 squared. Probably square root of, this turns into 4 squared plus 3 squared which turns into 16 plus 9, square root of 25. And this one turned out to be a nice and pretty one. Square root of 25 is, so the distance would be 5. Last thing I need to get is what if we did these numbers? So what's the distance between these two ordered pairs? Same formula. We're going to go, would I do 1 minus 6 or 6 minus 1? I would do 6 minus 1 because I want to keep the first one positive if I can. Now once I do the first one, do I have a choice for the second one? Since I did the 6 first, 6 has to first come here, minus 1 squared, yes? And then I get the square root of, this turns into 5 squared plus 5 squared. Now, please understand, this is going to be, I'll guarantee you all read this wrong, and this is, comes back to algebra. Someone read that for me. Wrong. Wrong. I did. I told you to read it. That's wrong. Okay. What? Closer. Nope. This is actually read. Good try. I like that you guys are trying. Good effort. This is actually read as the opposite of 5 squared, which means order of operations, you would square the 5 first, which is what? Then apply the negative, which is? So if you put that in the calculator, like the ones I have up there, it will kick out a negative 25. Why, why are these parentheses important? Because if you end up with a negative in there, this is how you write negative 5 squared. That means you are taking negative 5 and times it by negative 5, which is a positive 25. Are these two things the same? No. Hold on. I'm not done yet. Don't pack up on me. we got plenty of time. Relax, I will tell you when. This turns into 25 plus 25, which then becomes the square root of 50. You can actually put this in your calculator. In your calculator, you can actually hit the square root symbol, then you hit 50. If you hit equals, it will give you about 7.1. Sometimes I will want you to approximate your answer, and that will be your answer. But you guys keep telling me you were taught stuff in algebra one. 
you were also supposed to learn how to simplify this guy. And if you were taught how to simplify the square root of 50, you probably you should know how to make that become five square roots of two. This is actually the answer for this. If they don't ask you to give an approximation, this would be your answer. If they ask you to approximate it, you use a calculator, and that would be your answer. This, from here to here, is an algebra one skill. And if you need help with that, it is called simplifying radicals. I'm embarrassed for you. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. So um, if you need help with that, that might be something that you need to come and see tutoring because we will learn, we will have to simplify radicals in this. But that's something from algebra one you were supposed to have got. If you did it, it's okay, but we need to get it fixed. Okay? So questions on last night's or tonight's, I mean. Midpoint, finding maybe three-fifths of the way, and then the distance formula, finding the whole length of what it is between two points.